never been to North Carolina. I didn't know much about Duke outside of the undergraduate reputation. Whatever I feel from the place means a lot in my decision, and immediately I knew this is a good place. Duke was my first fellowship interview. I knew at the time I was coming to a very strong academic institution, but I really didn't know what to expect. In residency, you have a big group of people. Here was a one-to-one -one experience. My first interviewer was the late Dr. Michelle Wynn. I knew in advance Dr. Wynn will interview me, and I knew in advance how powerful, amazing, famous, knowledgeable, smart woman she was. She bought me coffee, we sat in the cafeteria, she grabbed an extra chair, she put her feet up, relaxed back and said, so tell me about you, and with a clap. Just a friendly face, a welcoming face. I remember very, very vividly how comfortable I felt in this. And even though it was my first interview, every single interview afterwards I was comparing with Duke. My interview day was completely different at Duke than it was anywhere else. Every idea that I had, as undeveloped as they were at the time, was an opportunity that the program leadership would be willing to make happen for me. I had a pretty significant interest in education as a resident, and I wanted to carry forward with that uh, focus as a fellow. I actually came into Duke thinking I was going to do GI. I kept coming back to what was I passionate about? What did I like to do? What did I want to do? I found that I was passionate about clinical nephrology, but was also passionate about how we could use the electronic health record to take care of patients. On my interview day, I remember meeting a lot of people who really had really diverse career interests within nephrology. Our program leadership did everything in their power to help support me along the way. During my time here, there's been this tremendous renaissance in downtown Durham into a place that's now the cool place to have a startup company or to live. I'm constantly learning of new opportunities, constantly meeting new people. We have big dreams here. We like people who want to think outside the box a little bit. The five department chairs that have been here while I've been here and the four division chiefs have all understood that if your training program isn't the primary thing in your division or department, then it won't be long before your research mission, your teaching missions fall off too. With that as the focus, we've been able to attract ambitious, hardworking people who get to know each other's story and have each other's back. You want to be in an environment that is intellectually stimulating. You want to be in an environment where you have multiple opportunities to explore in a non-stressful way. And you want to be in an environment where people are genuinely interested in mentoring you. Those three factors are here at Duke. In the first six months or so of my fellowship, I started to develop a growing interest in clinical research related topics and through excellent mentorship and through conversations with the program leadership, I was really put in contact with several opportunities to develop that interest that led to opportunities uh, with the clinical research fellowship, it led to opportunities with the master's degree in clinical research. It's flexibility and opportunity. I feel that Duke is somewhat unique among the stronger institutions in allowing fellows to seek out and find their niche, whether that's in clinical work, clinical or basic science research, or education, and allowing the fellows to find this niche during their fellowship rather than prior to their fellowship. Meeting with uh, the program leadership, I came up with a professional development plan to pursue medical education, and that included having a project, finding a mentor in the division, and then also uh, getting more training through a, a master's degree in medical education. And even after my experience, I've seen how they do that again and again with other fellows. Fellows, in the first week or two, I think what they need most from us is to be available, to be present. If you make it to our fellowship, you're a darn good resident. You've got a system that works for you. I, I don't try to, to modify it much, especially early on. I try to engage them. What kind of questions are you interested in solving? And it's okay not to know. It's like, I'm generally interested in this area, but I don't know the specific question. So the job of the mentor is to help to guide that person to the, to, to the question to which their passion is well aligned. It's a natural gravitation. And the job of the mentor is to, to make that 
alignment or to help them make that uh, connection. During first year fellowship, I had seen lots of patients with GN when I was on service, got more exposure to the nephropathology department, really had decided by the end of my first year fellowship that that GN was something that I wanted my future career to be focused in. Now that I've really established um, myself in this area of GN here at Duke, I'm excited about potential research opportunities in the future. When I first started in the lab, I began working in Tom Kaufman's lab, and he was the division chief at the time. And Tom had so many responsibilities, and yet knowing that I had not done a lot of basic science research before, he came into our, our lab meeting room and sat down with myself and one other fellow and taught us the basic uh, mechanics of pursuing research and explained to us RNA and how to investigate gene expression through various approaches. And I remember being amazed that someone with so many responsibilities would take the time to personally uh, teach me how to pursue basic science uh, research. Education is a big passion of mine and I spend a lot of my time thinking about how can we deliver educational content to people all over the world. I found that through the use of social media and medicine. We've built up community through NEFJC, through the Nephrology Social Media Collective, through Renal Fellow Network. I joined Duke with a very strong clinical interest. I did not have a strong research background. I never did basic science research. To my surprise, come December of my first year fellowship, I'm just having more fascination for basic science topics in the general clubs that we were doing than clinical topics. I said, well, I'm a Duke. We have a great research faculty in, in the lab. I don't want to waste this opportunity. Let me just give it a try. So I knock on the door, Dr. Kaufman at that time, and said, you know, I'm interested in doing um, research. Um, I have no background. I have never held a pipette before. Um, and this, yes, we will take you in. And I, that's how I met Dr. Susan Gurley, who was my uh, research mentor for, for so many years, and she still is. And, and I fell in love with basic science. And I am a better nephrologist today, truly because of all the research experience that I had during those last three years of my fellowship. When my clinical niche started to develop, which was on nephrology, again, Duke was able to support me and allow me to participate in symposiums, allow me to, to build up a, a clinic that specializes mostly on the care of cancer patients that develop some form of kidney complications. I think to be a good nephrologist, you really need to be a good internist. Almost always, I'll, I'll hear from a person that I think is, is really well suited for our field that they like seeing the same patient over time. They like to form a relationship with the patient because in nephrology, we get to do that, whether it's CKD or transplant or dialysis, we get to see our patients over and over again and it's, uh, it's one of the best things about our field. I really enjoy taking care of patients and working with the residents and the fellows, learning with them about how to take care of patients and about new treatments. I was attracted to nephrology by two specific needs. One is the need to see, can we come up with a biomarker that can diagnose acute kidney injury early? And two, can we slow down the progression of chronic kidney disease to end-stage kidney disease? That's the area that attracted me. And the research that I now do, uh, which is the research in APOL1 biology, fall within that spectrum. So that's really what wakes me up in the morning. To say, can we do a research? Can we understand the, the mechanism of progression? And can we slow it down? I have an active basic science research lab. I have started to try to understand how SARS-CoV-2, the virus responsible for COVID-19, interacts with the renin angiotensin system to create lung injury, kidney injury, and other forms of complications from COVID-19. We learn from each other, and we can come up with better solution to problems, better approach if we think differently. That's the beauty of a diverse institution. In the years that I've served as the Chair for Minority Recruitment and Retention, as well as Associate Vice Chair for Diversity within the Department of Medicine, I've seen the growth of the diversity. From the Department of Medicine, the Division of Nephrology, but across the institution, it's a, it's a plethora of minds put together to take care of patients. You're going to get that. You also have the diversity of patient population that you see, not just in Durham, but we are a referral center, so we take most of the patients in the region. 
nephrology is changing. And if you want to be in the center of that, come to Duke. We can actually help make your dreams happen. It takes people around you being interested in you. Yes, we are very strong clinically. We are very strong in research. We have amazing teachers. But at the end of the day, what I think makes Duke Duke is the people. That feeling that I had when I sat across the table with Dr. Wynn, that I'm welcome.